If your synthesizer has the ability to save patches locally, but switching between them requires remembering patch banks and patch numbers, it can be pretty frustrating. To make things easier, the MIDI Goblin can now send program change messages. This means you can now name and load any patch on any bank of your synthesizer. This feature can be quite helpful if you need to load multiple patches during live performances. Uh, associating a word with a sound is typically a lot easier for most people. Many modern and even vintage synthesizers do feature displays which allow you to load patches a bit easier. With that being said, there's still quite a few modern synthesizers out there that use patch banks for loading patches. These synths often lack proper OLED displays and instead opt for seven segmented displays or no display at all. This isn't always just a cost cutting measure that the manufacturer has taken. It's likely a design choice. But if you have trouble with this workflow, using the MIDI Goblin to load named patches could be really helpful. This feature is especially useful if you have a song that requires multiple patches to be loaded in a certain order, but the patches you need to load are scattered throughout your patch banks. Just a quick reminder before we get started, the MIDI Goblin Kickstarter launch date is April the 30th. A big thank you to the fellow synth enthusiast who suggested this idea, and a reminder that the MIDI Goblin is going to be an open source device. And if you want to use the MIDI Goblin for something entirely different, we'll have a blank version of the case available, so you can use the MIDI Goblin for your own projects. It can be easily programmed using the Arduino IDE. The MIDI Goblin can tell your synthesizer to switch between patches by sending program change messages. Don't worry, you don't have to program anything. This process is actually quite simple. First, find the number of the patch you want to name. Many synthesizers use different numbering schemes. For example, the JU06A numbers them like this, whereas the IRA S1 numbers them like this. I was surprised to find out neither of these devices use bank selection messages. Just goes to show you should read your manual. As an example, let's try loading up bank number four, patch number three on the JU06A, otherwise known as program number 26. Now all you gotta do is just open up notepad and write program space 26. Save that file in your device's patches folder on the MIDI Goblin micro SD card, and you're good to go. If your synth requires bank selection messages to switch between patches, just write program space bank number space program number, also known as patch number. If you have a song that requires multiple patches to be loaded in sequence, just give the text files similar names like Song 1A, Song 1B, Song 1C, and that's it. Sort of. There are some requirements for this to work. Number one, your synth has to respond to MIDI program change messages. We're not using SysX, this is standard MIDI. It's a pretty common feature amongst most devices, but just make sure to check your manual. Number two, you have to make sure you use the correct MIDI channel. Some devices require you transmit program change messages over certain MIDI channels. You can usually change this channel, but if you can't, you can change the output channel on the MIDI Goblin to match it up. Number three, the current character limit for the size of these files' names is six letters, or numbers. Well, technically it's 10 if you count .txt, but no one does. The reasoning behind this has to do with the file system or SD library that's currently being used on the MIDI Goblin. I may be able to overcome this limitation in the future and will let you know, but for now it's a trade-off. You get a six letter word versus a patch bank and a patch number. And lastly, just be sure to read your manual. Sometimes things can inadvertently interfere with program change messages. For example, I tested this out on the Novation Base Station 2. It was lent to me by a member of Slashneed. Check them out. The feature works just fine, but somewhere down the road it stopped working. When I returned the base station to them, they told me that some setting in the arpeggiator may have inadvertently been turned on or off, and this would have gummed up the works. So when in doubt, just make sure you read your manual. I'm sure I would have noticed this if I had done so. And that's it for this video. Please check out midigoblin.com and don't forget to sign up for the email list. We'll send you one email when the Kickstarter campaign is about to launch. Other than the Midi Goblin itself, I'm working on some fun rewards for backers. Uh, don't forget to follow us here or on Facebook or Instagram. We'll have more announcements for you in the future. Goodbye.